Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. March 3rd, 2024. Let's get into it. Now that I'm completely censored off of the internet, <laughs> and you know, I just make, you know, the beautiful thing is, is I can just tell you the truth. I mean, most people, you know, the influencers out there, they're, they're sitting in fuselages of false planes and putting on pretend clothes. Do you, you think these are pretend clothes? I mean, <laughs> this is just me in my house making you videos, trying to educate you about the world. And all 12 of you that watch my videos, good job. I, I don't know where that interview is going to go. I was thinking it might drop this week. And, uh, and, and by the way, I'll just keep throwing out a little bit more information in case it doesn't, you know, maybe I was supporting the wrong organization. It was our country, our choice. I had an interview with Colonel Douglas McGregor, nothing, no, no text messages, no, no, nothing. I, I thought the interview went well, but you know, we shall see. So we're just going to get into to the news because good God, I mean, <laughs> you've been following along. A whole damn world. I mean, if we if we don't enter into a nuclear conflict with Russia, I, I, I'm going to be absolutely shocked. So let's just get into some of my bookmarks. So this is a ZLATTI-71. Uh, former head of the CIA, former U.S. Secretary of Defense Robert Gates calls for attacking the Crimean Bridge. <laughs> and if you didn't follow along in the news... The Germans were planning it. What the hell is what? What's up with the Crimean Bridge? Everybody wants to attack the Crimean Bridge. I mean, right now it's it. It used to be landlocked, landlocked, and of course Russia was bringing supplies over into Crimea with with ships and everything. But at this point, I mean, why are they going to waste all this ordnance? Ukraine's losing the war, man. And by the way, I, I did want to get into. Uh, well, let's, let's just set this aside for just a second, because I, I wanted to talk about the Ukraine more. Now, the numbers that I'm seeing on a daily basis, uh, I'm seeing about a thousand Ukrainians dead each day. Now, this is reported by the Russian uh, Russians, obviously, and uh, I, don't, I, I tell you what, I, I, found, I haven't found a single instance where what they're reporting, it, it's usually on the conservative side. So that probably means there's more casualties and dead Ukrainians than, than actually what they're reporting. So 365 days a year, 1,000 dead, that's 365,000 dead Ukrainians in one year. So if you take, we've been at this two years, and by the way, I, I think in the initial uh, phase of the conflict, there was much, many more casualties in a single day. Uh, sometimes up to 2,000 uh, Ukrainians a day, and of course it drops down. Sometimes you might only have 300. I think, you know, and I heard, I, I watched Colonel Douglas McGregor, and of course I watched Scott Ritter, and I watch a lot of uh, uh, independent news. I really think we're approaching about one to two million dead Ukrainians and maybe upwards of three million casualties. Now, the thing that has blown my freaking mind about watching this thing day after day, after, you'd say, well, why don't you watch a movie? By the way, I did. I watched uh, Season of the Witch. If you, ever, if you haven't checked out Tubi on, uh, on your free uh, smart TV, I'm going to tell you what, I get better uh, movies on Tubi than I do on Netflix or Amazon. <laughs> and those are paid services. Of course, I'm doing the minimum. And what's cool is like Tubi, they have commercials. All right. So there's some people out there. I mean, I got a friend of mine. He, he, if it's got a single commercial, he won't watch it. But I'm going to tell you, Tubi only runs one or two, maybe three commercials during the whole movie. And, uh, and there's some really good movies on there, man. In fact, there was a, a ter I mean, a, a Predator movie. And I can't remember what it was called. But it was a new Predator movie, and I'd never heard of it because, you know, of course, Arnold Schwarzenegger, we, men, the, we, we all remember the original, and then, of course, we had Danny Glover. This was a whole new one with a whole new cast of characters. This was a bunch of misfits that, uh, I, that were going out and fighting the Predator across the United States. Uh, it, was, it was a really cool movie. I mean, it, the, the, of course, the story is completely unbelievable, but it was cool special effects, and I really enjoyed it. 
All right, so getting back to the Ukraine war, I mean, do you think that Russia was justified in their invasion of Ukraine? Good God, <laughs> I think so. If, if Mexico could have fought the United States for two freaking years to a standstill, uh, sacrificing two million Mexicans to, to basically just, you know, and they were armed to the teeth. I mean, that's what I see day after day. Now, are the Russians advancing? Yes, they're advancing. It's a war of attrition. They're just grinding their way along, grinding their way along, grinding their way along. And it, I just, it's, it's, and, and yet we have the Democrat leaders in the United States that couldn't give a shit about this proxy war, and the Ukrainians are just cannon fodder. But anyway, let's get back to my, uh, my, my, my list here. So we were talking about Robert Gates. According to him, this is not a difficult matter and would have a strong impact on the Russians, both psychologically and militarily. This is their territory. If they decide to attack targets, they will attack targets inside Ukraine, not inside Russia, no matter what Putin claims he incites. So, you know, basically what he's calling for is strikes with inside Russia. This is a nuclear armed nation. I mean, actually their nuclear weapons are a hell of a lot better than what we have here in the United States. So let's get, let's keep going here. So, uh, all right, let's see. Let me go back just a little bit. So this was Saudi Arabia has denied Western coalition countries access to its airspace to carry out airstrikes in Yemen. Well, Saudi Arabia was at war with Yemen for, what, how many years? They, we used Saudi Arabia as a proxy to fight Yemen? I think that's pretty significant. And I, I did another tweet where I was talking about that ship that got sunk uh, by Yemen. And I said, well, the captain of the ship should have gone to jail, right? I mean, he sailed a ship, a cargo ship, into a, it was a, full of nitrogen. Of course, they were talking about how all that stuff's going to wash up on the shore of Yemen. He sailed a ship into a war zone. Who the, what kind of captain does it? The guy should be in jail. It just seems like the stupidity of the world just gets rewarded. He's probably being promoted. He's probably in the Biden administration right now. That'd be my guess. So uh, this, was, this was huge. And uh, this, this was a biggie. The massacre carried out by the Israeli army last night is one of the biggest crimes in, in history of mankind. This is Megatron, by the way, and so you, Megatron underscore Ron. They sent Israeli aid trucks designed to help lure starving Gazans and open fire on them with machine guns and tanks. All this by filming it from a drone and making fun of it. This evil is similar to what Hitler sent them to concentration camps by lying to them as they were going to work by, in Nazi factories. Disgusting. I agree. I agree. I mean, this is unbelievable. And uh, and so now, you know, of course, Biden, you know, the Democrats are looking so bad. Genocide Joe, Genocide Joe's looking pretty bad at this point. So we're going to airdrop uh, uh, humanitarian aid in. I guess he's trying to repair his relationship with the Muslims in the United States. I hope they don't fall for it. They can't be that freaking stupid. But, uh, but anyway, so... So what's going to happen when the Palestinians go to, to, to open up those pallets because they're starving to death? Well, I mean, the bombs that the Biden administration has given to Israel <laughs> are going to start dropping. And is, once we get a good congregation of Palestinians around those pallets, I imagine they're all going to die, right? <laughs> what more? It's like leading a mouse to a flame. All the mouses are going to run right there to the flame, and then, of course, the Israelis are going to kill them all. So, you know, the Zionists, I, I shouldn't say, that. well, the Zionist Israelis. So, I mean, you know, it's just, it's just complete lunacy. Uh, oh, this was, uh, this was by Simpli Simplicius the Thinker. And, uh, you know, one of the things we don't understand is the, the weapons that are being used in Ukraine are beyond belief. And thank God I was never on the receiving end of some of this stuff. And he did a breakdown of the Russian Fab 500. Now, they're using Fab 1500 kilogram uh, bombs. But uh, So let's just get into just a brief description. A little info on the Russian Fab 500 ordnance power. 
In total, bombs of 500 kg carry about 200 kg of explosive type TTA, and I, I don't recognize that Greek symbol, dash IFFM. The efficiency of this type of explosive is about 1.3 to TNT. Now, if you didn't understand C4, if you don't understand explosives, everything's kind of based off... Well, I mean, you remember TNT was around for hundreds, <laughs> hundred years or more. I don't know. And so everything kind of gets based off of TNT. Of course, the explosive power of deck cord is based off of TNT. The explosive power of C4 is based off of TNT. Uh, so let's keep going. Uh, so, and of course, even we even compare nuclear bombs to how many pounds of TNT. So it's it's kind of like that 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 underlying weight measure that, that that gets everything. So let's just keep going. So the equipment is about 300 kg. The air shock wave impact zones in a ground explosion. So let's just let's just describe this. Now you're a Ukrainian troop. You're in a house, hold up, you're waiting uh, to fight the Russians, and one of these bombs drops on you. So let's just get into the lethal impact of one of these bombs. This is a 500 kg. This is even talking about the 1500 kg. Radius of 100% lethal impact zone, 10.8 meters, here and after from the epicenter of the explosion. Radius of the kill zone is 38.2 meters, a slight contusion. Slight contusion. Well, you know what? That means brain damaged for the rest of your life. But let's just keep going. Of course, I'm brain damaged. I fell down the damn stairs and broke my neck. But here, let's keep going. Radius of the zone of minimal human exposure, 152.1 meters, tinnitus. How many veterans do you know that have ringing in their ears? Well, if you haven't been to war, I mean... This was one of the things I got tested for. I still have ringing in my ears, but it's not to the extent that it makes me dysfunctional. Okay? So when you're around loud explosions, and, and I imagine, you know, there's lots of people, construction workers, uh, everything, you know, adequate ear protection is not provided in many jobs or especially in the military. And, uh, it, and, and by the way, it, it, when you're in war, you can't wear ear protection because you got to hear what's going on around you. So when a bomb goes off, your hearing is screwed, man. So the radius of the zone of total destruction, 21.9 meters. Collapse of all elements of buildings and structures, including basements. Radius of severe destruction zone is 30.3 meters. Destruction of 50% of the walls, floors, formation of cracks. Radius of medium destruction zone, 46.3 meters. Damage to roof, partitions, and infills. Radius of the weak damage zone, 68.6 .6 meters. Weaken of large bearing structures. Radius of 100% glazing damage zone is 115.4 meters. Radius of the glazing damage zone is 342.5 meters. Characteristics of the magma. I'm going to get to the end of this. I know this is boring as hell. I'm trying to. I'm trying to interject in here to make it a little bit more interesting. But characteristics of the fragmentation field: maximum number of hazardous fragments, 81,750 pieces with ideal hall cushion. So imagine, you know, a thousand pieces of shrapnel entering your body uh, in the blast radius. Well, that, that probably doesn't feel very good, now does it? So let, let's just keep going. Uh, average mass of a fragment dangerous to a person, two, two Grammys. So, okay, so you got 81,750, and two of those can be uh, dangerous to you. Initial velocity of the fragments is 1,127.3 uh, meters per second. Well, if you're a Marine... What's the velocity of your M16? I'm going to put that question out there because you know what? I can't remember <laughs> as much as I want to play that I'm smart. I, you had to memorize that shit in the Marine Corps, especially in basic training. So max fragmentation rate, 1,470 meters. Uh, radius of continuous fragmentation zone, 70% probably, 100.2 meters. And then it just goes on and on and on. So... So when a bomb is detonated in an open area, its kill characteristics will be lower than that calculated. 
in a confined space, the explosion is about 1.5 times, like a confined explosion. I've described that to you many times. If you're going to blow up a tree, you're going to screw a hole in the tree, you're going to stick your TNT, your C4, your deck cord inside the tree, and then that explosion blows out. You're not going to just pat the explosive on the side. All right, let's get off of that. But I just wanted to kind of paint the picture of what it's like when these bombs are dropped on you. And the Russians are dropping these on the Ukrainians, killing them by the thousands each day, man. And we're all for it as a country. We're all for killing the Gazans, the women, the children, you know, the extermination of Gaza. I mean, what the hell has happened to the United States? But let me just keep going. Obviously, this is why I, I get 12 people that watch these videos. <laughs> So let's just keep going. Breaking. U.S. soldier sets himself on fire outside the Israeli embassy in Washington. So this was Aaron. And if you haven't followed the story, I'm going to get into some of my posts because the guy's a hero, man. And uh, he, he brought attention to the fact that not all Americans are for the extermination of the Palestinians in Gaza. Uh, hell, I was even watching Dr. Phil and Glenn Beck, and they were talking about, oh, 20,000, 25,000 dead Palestinian civilians. Well, that's just the price they pay for, for uh, Hamas coming across the border and, and challenging Israel. Ah, uh, this is an interesting. In, in international legality, it's, it's not restored in Ukraine. Outbreaks of conflicts will multiply. This is, but I'll tell you what, I hate this woman now. Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney. I thought she was going to be a populist. I thought she wasn't going to be a globalist. But they ran her, and this is what happens. You vote for a wolf in sheep's clothing. She turns out to be a freaking disaster for Italy. You know, it, it, it really, people just kind of like need to take pitchforks and knives in Italy and, and put this woman out of power. But let's just, just say, I'll just read this to you. I think this is a quote from her. If Russia had not invaded Ukraine, Hamas would most likely not have launched such an attack on Israel. By the way, so she's a huge Zionist, just like Joe Biden, genocide Joe Biden is. It was inevitable that such a serious violation of international system based on law by a permanent member of the UN Security Council would have cascading consequences for other regions and participants in the world from the Middle East to the Balkans. All the way to Africa. This is the game we play and we must be aware of it, Maloney said. So there you go. It's a quote from her. I hate that one. I do. I do. I can't stand her. But let's keep going. So Yemen's Houthis captured the American Remus. Oh, yeah. This was an unmanned underwater vehicle. I don't know if you follow along on X. So they captured one of our best technological pieces. Can you imagine a bunch of hoodies swimming around in bathing suits <laughs> and captured this thing? <laughs> I, you know, I don't even know how it's possible. But they, obviously, they got some equipment. So let's get into Splinter. Uh, Maduro. Russia defeats all Western countries on the battlefield. And uh, this is a quote from him. What has happened in Ukraine is a war initiated by the West and NATO. The conflict has already begun, become unbearable for the United States while the Russian economy has strengthened, said Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro. Now, with that said, do you understand that a lot of the uh, South American countries are aligning themselves, so, even Colombia. I found out Colombia, of course, Brazil, uh, everybody is, I mean, everybody in South America, Ecuador, uh, what was the one, um, well, of course, El Salvador is sending all the criminals to the United States, and Venezuela has sent all their criminals to the United States. But all these countries are aligning themselves with Russia because Russia makes common sense. The United States, the Democrats in charge, have destroyed the United States. They don't want anything to do with us. I mean, what the hell do you think? So then we get to, uh, this is, this is I, I'm going to get, I know this video is getting long in the tooth, so we're going to keep, keep this up. Ibram Tamrok, Tarkori, Leader of the transitional government of Burkina Faso made several statements while addressing the nation at the Sports Palace. If you didn't understand, this is one of the countries that kicked out France uh, and, and, of course, the United States. Uh, and don't, actually, we funded and trained <laughs> to a certain degree. <laughs> Good tax dollars well spent, eh? Uh, while addressing... We can have independence at both food and industrial levels. So what he's selling, he's saying that we want to get away from the West. We want nothing to do with the United States. And he's telling his people that if they work hard, they can, they can achieve these things. 
It's time for Africans to stop feeling sorry for themselves, moping and lamenting. We must fight. Prosperity will not only come from heaven. First, you must fight and God will help you. Countries have banned food exports to Burkina. At the end of this ban, we ourselves will ban the import of these products into our country. All who betray their homeland in favor of imperialism of the United States, of the West, well, let me just add that to it, will be treated as such. So what he's saying is he wants nothing to do with the United States. So you can see how the whole world, the whole world is lining up against the West and the United States. They don't want it. It's Africa doesn't want anything to do with us. South America doesn't want anything to do with us. This is what the Democrats are doing. Basically, the whole freaking world is coming up against the United States. This is what's happening. And, and people are just going along with it. Oh, yeah, well, you know, uh, yeah, okay, let's just keep going. So we no longer have feelings for traitors. ECOWAS. ECOWAS is the organization that uh, supports the United States and the West. Has never issued a press release to congratulate our armies on their victories. Some have closed the port today. They are the ones paying the price. We are calling the, and I'm not even sure what this word is. Maybe you can tell me. P-U-T-S-C-H-I-S-T-S. -S -S. Sitchnist. But we don't. But we don't. Okay, so that's that's it for that one. All right, we're going to read one more, and then I'll get into some of my posts, and then we'll finish the video. I hope Russia is helping the Yemeni rebels to fight democracy and independence. The Yemeni Navy sank the... Eng but this is what I was talking about. So, so the Yemeni Navy sank the English cargo ship, the 30,000th Rub Ruby Mar, with underwater drones within a day. The crew abandoned the ship and were rescued by a tugboat from Djibouti. D -J -I -B -O -U -T -I, the Yemenis have dis also disabled two auxiliary transport, Sea Champion and the Navis Fortuna, with cargo to support the United States Navy Aircraft Carrier Group in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Ardun. The joint operation of NATO and the U.S. Naval Forces Guardian of Prosperity continues. Why the hell was the ship there? That's my question. And why isn't the captain of the ship for sailing his ship into a war zone in jail? I mean, it seems like no matter the amount of stupidity or the amount of criminality that we do in the world, it just goes unpunished. I don't even get it. So that's all, that's all the bookmarks I'm going to go through for this. So I want to just get into a couple of replies here. Let me go into my profile, and uh, we're going to get into a couple of replies. So uh, this is this is Wall Street Silver. An elderly woman on a fixed budget hammers city council over the illegal migrants flooding the city. Well, okay, but I bet she voted Democrat. <laughs> I'm here to speak on the behalf of the before, the elderly, who are struggling because of the issues that you deal with and how you can deal with them. So anyway, and then if we look at Denver, I mean, and of course, Denver, they voted Democrat. So, and, and then I said, of course, in Denver, she probably voted Democrat. So then this is, a, uh, this was one. It's inexplicable how people of color, particularly African Americans, support Israel. I mean, of all people, they can truly empathize with the Palestinians. And then it says, do you like my shirt? And he says, make, it's a black guy with a make Gaza Jewish again. And I said, more inexplicable is how people of color support the Democrats. The Democrats, the Democrat party of slavery that the Republicans defeated. The party that enslaved them and hates them. And of course, hates the United States, the Marxists, the communist Democrats. I mean, I, I mean where, do you, where the hell do you want to go with all of this? So then we get into illegal immigrants are still sleeping in terminals in Boston Airport. How do we get here? And I say Democrats is, is why we have illegal immigrants sleeping at Boston Airport, because they want open borders, because they were trying to bring in a whole new voting bloc to replace the blacks that we just talked about in the previous post. The blacks don't even understand it. The blacks are going like, why are the illegal immigrants getting all the money and we're not getting anything anymore? Because the Democrats hate you. You African-Americans, do you think they care about you? No, they are bringing in a whole new voting bloc to replace you. So then we got ONS Defender. The U.S. Air Force's Central Air Command has conducted its first round of humanitarian airdrops. And of course, this, 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 this is where I said, 
This is more targets. Of course, the airdrops. Because remember, there's a big pallet sitting there. All the people are going to rush in. So I said, it's more targets for the Zionists to bomb with U.S. supplied weapons when the Palestinians get near the pallets. More efficient mass killing when they bunch together. Genocide Joe Biden. Genocide Joe. Genocide is having uh, a martini in celebration. Do you think the Democrats aren't celebrating that now the Israelis can kill more Palestinians? I mean, what the hell are they thinking about? So anyway, let's just keep going. So every damn day, the richest, freest, most comfortable, most powerful people and nations in the world watch Ukrainians die for freedom, die to keep Russian war from their soldiers' borders. Full support could end it quickly. Quick, full support. Do you think we ever given full support? We've given them every freaking weapon that we could. And it goes on from there. So then, of course, this was where a guy says Russia continues to wage war against civilians, which is bullshit because they've done the best they could. And then, of course, Scott Ritter says, has it settled in yet, Gary? America doesn't care about Ukraine. <laughs> we couldn't give a shit about Ukraine. Never has, never will. Ukraine is nothing more than a tool which, upon being broken, is simply cast aside. Ukraine is broken. We're casting it aside. Then, of course, I said, just like uh, we may use Poland as the next proxy next. So anyway, good Lord. I think this thing is getting too 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 far in the tooth, but let's just keep going. So this was another reply. The bloodthirsty Democrats will stop supporting the Israeli genocide, genocide of Palestinians, extermination of Palestinians, because that is who they are. I said they won't stop. They are uncaring, narcissistic, power-hungry, Marxist globalists. I mean, that's who the Democrats are. And, of course, I was in reply to Israeli strikes on tents of displaced families. Read those words slowly and then read them again. Uh, this is O-S-I-N-T -S Defender. The MV Rubnar uh, UK-owned cargo ship. Oh, yeah, that was just a cargo ship that got struck. All right, so let's get to just a couple of my posts, and then we'll be done. So, um, well, I guess that's it. So, we'll finish off the video there. Now, I, I did want to get into um, the NSA and how they're spying on everybody. Understand, this is just a spying weapon. It's it's meant to it's meant to rot your damn brain, and it's going to rot the the brain of your kids. Okay, everything you do on this smartphone is recorded for all time at the NSA in their huge, huge data facility that sits 25 miles from Salt Lake City. And this is why I got banned from the Internet for just letting you know that. Now, I do want to do some readings from my book, but I was kind of hoping that uh, Colonel Douglas McGregor and Our Country, Our Choice would drop the video and make my book available to you and I still hope for that. They're very busy. I mean, can you think? I mean, good God, I think they're up to 200 people that are following them. So I guess that's it for today's video. I mean, holy shit. I'm trying to run through my brain. What else is going on in the world that you might want to know about? Uh, well, Poland seems like they're preparing to, to become the next proxy. Uh, they're, they're definitely gearing up for war with Russia. Uh, I think they're complete idiots. Russia's just going to crush them like a bug. Just like they've crushed, uh, and of course, if you didn't understand, Russia's got some some new nukes coming online, and they're fully tested out now, and they've got some new hypersonic uh, technology, and they've got some new bombers that have come online. I mean, my God, Russia, <laughs> they, they are definitely the most powerful military force in the world, and uh, if, if, if the West wants to keep, pardon my French, fucking with them, uh, we're all going to die. Let's just put it that way. Peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar. That Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician, sooner or later God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later God's gonna cut you down.